Okay, uh, we've got to seven o'clock now, so I think it's about time to start the webinar. So welcome to everybody for our first uh, series of webinars from Proform. Uh, we haven't done these for one of these for a while now, but our aim is to have a regular series of these events um, covering all aspects of Proform um, to give you some some tricks, tricks and tips, and also provide you um, make you aware of s some of the use useful features of Proform. Tonight we'll be covering the um, race guides, uh, essentially to look at five steps steps for contender selection. Uh, we're also trialing some new, uh, well, the Google Hangout webinar uh, facility. So if you're experiencing any technical difficulties, difficulties just please bear with us um, while we try and work around it. So the Proform uh, race guides were created with uh, punters in mind, essentially to provide relevant race information for uh, the casual and serious punter. Because our philosophy at Proform is not to tell you what to do, but to show you how you can do it for yourself so you can take responsibility for your own decisions. So the objective tonight really is to show you, using our guides, a structured approach to narrowing the field of contenders. Um, how you can interact today and would help us immensely is, is via email. Um, the Google Hangout tool itself uh, is, is very buffered, so we're unable to handle real-time questions. But if um, you do have any comments or concerns or questions from the tonight's content, then uh, please forward that to myself and Simon via email. Also note that the webinar tonight will be recorded. And uh, at the conclusion, conclusion of this event, what I'll do is send out an email to all attendees uh, with a link to the recorded uh, recording of this website, sorry, of this webinar, so you can uh, watch in your own time. So the presenter tonight is myself. Myself is Mike Bailey. Uh, for those of you who have a social presence on Twitter, um, I'm known as uh, Slippery Toad. Um, I'm a Proform technical consultant and have been involved with Proform for about uh, five, possibly six years. Um, like yourself, I was a um, subscriber to Proform before two years ago, uh, taking voluntary redundancy to work for Proform full time and uh, focus on my betting. Um, my betting pre predominantly is, is spread betting on horse racing and football. And um, I use the data from um, Proform to help me price up the various spread markets. So tonight's webinar is, is helping us with contender selection. Um, what we're doing in essence is, is we're, we're trying to be a detective um, and during our race analysis, given all the various data that we have at our disposal, um, what we're trying to do is look for various clues. And these clues will help us determine what the most likely contenders are. And effectively what we're gonna do tonight is um, use, use the race guides to help us in that process. So tonight, what we'll cover is how you can quickly shortlist horses using our ratings, how to identify horses that have demonstrated an ability to beat winners, how you can identify the class horse of the field, how you can quickly identify which horses are suited to race conditions, and finally, uh, we'll use our pace maps to show you how you can visualize the pace within a particular race. Once we've gone through those topics, what I'll do is to go through uh, each of those items um, using a race guide for a race that occurs tomorrow at Wolverhampton. So uh, let's get started. So from the very many variables the race guide provides, uh, we use the Proform Power Rating um, in the race guides. And essentially the power rating is derived from seven other factors to arrive at a figure for each particular horse. 
that figure is displayed in the race guide as follows, where you'll have under the races column a particular number. And to help you identify top rate horses from everything else, we have this color coded system of gold, silver, and bronze. Now, why would you use the pro form rating? Well, they have a high expectation, meaning that the higher rated horses win more often than the lower rated horses. And therefore, if we note the higher rated horses, um, or more importantly, look at the um, distribution and difference in, in between the high rated horses and the closely rated horses, it gives us an idea of, first of all, contenders, or more importantly, how close these contenders are. Within the race guides, we also have the ProForm speed rating. And what a speed rating is, is a measure of performance against time. Now, there's plenty of information that describes what a speed rating is and how it's derived. And I don't intend to cover that in this webinar. But effectively, um, what we do is use the, in the race guides, the horse's last time out speed rating. And, and the reason why we use the last time out speed rating is that various studies have shown that it's a good indication of a horse's future performance. And similar to uh, the power ratings, we also color code the last time at speed rating in gold, uh, silver, and bron bronze color. And then for each speed rating, there is an associated graphic, which I'll go on to explain how it, how it works. So what we have on the screen now is a bunch of numbers and they probably won't make any sense until we actually indicate that each number is an individual last time out speed rating for winners in a specific class. And when we look closely at the numbers, you know, various patterns emerge in, in that 71 here is the is a cluster of 71 uh, speed ratings and here we have a 73. And then we have a cluster of 64s as well. So from that, we can determine that there is some sort of pattern to these particular numbers. So if we take these numbers and plot them uh, in the manner shown on the screen, what we can see is what is known as a, a distribution. And if we call the middle of the distribution or the midpoint a par, then anything to the left of that distribution, any uh, number to the left of that par is worse than par, and anything to the right is better than par. Uh, so what this allows us to do then is to take a horse's last time out speed rating and measure it against a distribution of winners for a particular speed ratings for um, a particular class. So for example, if we take horse A, um, whatever speed rating it achieved was better than par. And what we then do in the race guides is actually um, display that speed rating as a magnitude uh, and as a graphic. And so the magnitude of the graphic shows how more to the right of par that speed rating is. And then if we take horse B and C, we can also see that their speed ratings were below the par for this particular class, of which B, um, last time at speed rating, was much lower than, than C's. So by plotting and having this information in this manner, it allows us to take the horse's last time at speed rating and benchmark it, benchmark it against the distribution of winners to determine how good the previous performance was. So the information is displayed in this format and you can see here that highlighted uh, the horse had a speed rating of 67 last time out and measured against the distribution for this particular class, it's, this speed rating was three above par. And if we take this particular horse, it's last time at speed rate rating of 58 um, was six below par. So from, from a contender's selection perspective, what we're trying to do is identify horses that 
affects you of run well last time out. And by displaying it in this graphical format, it's very, very easy to determine who's run well and who has not. The third element is the class movement. And so the term class in horse racing means the quality of opposition a horse is competed against. And class is an important modifying factor during your selection process. So if we take, for example, Usain Bolt uh, in displayed here, um, if I were to run against U Usain Bolt in the World Championships, uh, Athletics World Championships next year, then effectively I'm, I'm running out of my class. I have to effectively improve to, to beat him. Whereby if Usain Bolt came to my local track of Bath, then I'm running within my own class and he is dropping in class. But effectively, all he needs to do is to perform to his best in order to beat me because he's a higher class individual. And the same analogy can be used with class movements and horses as well. So what we have within the race guides is this class movement indicator whereby a down arrow indicates a horse that's dropping in class, effectively a horse that needs to uh, run up to its um, best in order to beat the opposition because it's running against lower class or lower class individuals. This indicator means the horse is actually running in the same grade as last time out. So all it needs to do is to run up to its best and then this indicator indicates a horse that's been raised in class. So it needs to improve in order to compete against higher class individuals. So what the class indicator allows us to do is, is to identify which horses below belong in the grade or which horses that we need to consider in respect to their ability to run at a higher level. If we take the fourth element, which are the horse's individual statistics, uh, this information is displayed in the race guides via the horse uh, past performance grid. The table itself is ordered in pro form rating order. So horse number five, normally Knight, is top rated in the race and new market warrior number one is bottom rated. We take the individual categories of career, distance, class, and course, and the horse's performance is numerated under each column. Beside that, we take the figure and turn it into a, a graphic. And based on some studies myself and Simon have, have uh, uh, done, we concluded that uh, if the strike rate is um, at 15% or above, then we would turn that as a good performance or a, a, a key performance. And so we color code that um, bar in green. The length of the bar indicates the magnitude of that performance. And as you can see, we've repeated this for each uh, category. By doing it this way, it allows us to scan down the grid fairly quickly to identify horses that have had performances greater than 15% and those that are below 15%. And then we can make conclusions in respect to uh, uh, choosing a horse for, um, for our contenders list. So for example, horse number four here has run 33 times. It's placed on nine occasions and it's only won twice. Um, we can tell that, that it's got a small red bar here. So probably wouldn't reach our contenders list. Contrast that with horse number one, New Market Warrior. You'll note that the bar is um, highlighted in gray. And that's an indication of indeterminate performance. If you can see from its past record, it's run nine times and placed on three occasions. So there's just not enough data there to really tell us whether the horse is something that we need to, to, to consider as in terms of its past performance. So we've colored it in gray as an indeterminate color.
they say that the most important factor in horse racing is the going. And so we recognize that in splitting out the um, past performances on relevant goings for each horse in our horse form ongoing statistics grid, which I'm showing here on the screen. Uh, we've grouped together a number of different performances. And then for each horse, we have their performance under each going description um, listed here and enumerated. And very similar to the past performance uh, grid previously shown, in this column or these columns, we have a color to indicate whether the value or the strike rate is 15% or higher. And again, by color coding it this way, it allows us to scan the information fairly quickly to determine which horses that we need to consider based on the going conditions. So for example, if this race was being run under uh, good conditions, then it's fairly easy to see that uh, horse number one um, is something that we need to consider because it's it's one on that on, the, on those going conditions. Um, horse number six here it's indeterminate. It's run five times and it's placed twice. We're not really sure about that performance, so we've actually placed it in in grey. The advantage of um, displaying the information in this way is that if the going changes from good to good to soft, then instantly we have all the information at our disposal. We don't have to search for it, it's in front of our eyes. So we can then quickly see that um, horse number seven has performed well under these, these conditions. The other advantage as well is that we can see what the optimal conditions are for a particular horse because we have all its information in front of us and we can see if it moves to various which are its optimal going conditions so from a contender perspective what we can do is take the going description or the official going description and use this grid to identify which horses are mo most suited to the going conditions and add those to our contenders list When we're looking at a race, the first question we, we should try to answer is how the race is going to be run. Horses are pack animals um, and they, from their background, some like to run at the front, some like to run in the middle, and some like to run at the end. And what we've done using our pace map is to contextualize that information in, a, in graphical form. So I'll just spend a moment just going through the detail on the pace map. So in this particular column here, we have the saddle cloth number, the horse's name, the silk, and the draw position. Here is an impact value, um, which is a statistical measure. Um, effectively tells you whether a particular store or an item is, is performing better or, or worse than expected or better or worse than normal. Uh, I won't go through the, the nature of the calculation here, but anything above one is performs better than normal, and any value below one is 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 worse than normal. And we've taken that data and put it turned it into a graphic. Here we have the horse's pace figure. Um, we take the last three runs of the horse, and from that we can work out an overall figure. There is a video on our website that this explains it in more detail but from that we can then plot that figure onto a, a grid that you see here so for horses that are have low values in, in terms of pace they tend to be held up so we plot them in this column contrast that with horses that have a high value of a pace figure we will plot, plot them in, in in this value here so overall what we have is all the information that we need to draw some conclusions as to how the, the race will be run. And it allows us to run various scenarios as well. So for instance, if horse number five is part of our contenders list, something that we pre previous information has told us, it's a horse that we need to look at, we now need to ask ourselves the question, given its draw position in store 12, is it 
and this is a right-handed track in that store one is typically close to the rail how is it going to be run is it continually going to be run held up and dropping behind or is it going to try to uh, get get to the lead same with horse number eight as well um, our previous data may have told us that it's not a contender so even though it's in an advantageous store position it's likely to go out and get out into the lead but given the nature of the horse and the pace configuration it may set it set the race up for something else so what the pace map does is to allow us to go through various scenarios to then determine from a pace perspective who are the contenders and who, who are not. So we've covered the five elements in summary, the Proform power ratings, the Proform speed ratings, the class indicator, the horse pace, sorry, the horse pass performance and going grid, and the pace map. So what we're gonna do now is to go on to an example where I'll identify these elements on a race guide for, for tomorrow. So what we have here is a race from Wolverhampton. Um, the race is at uh, 26, 1740, and it's uh, across a mile. Let's just go into that. So let's just identify the five elements that I pointed out earlier. In this column, what we have is the Proform power rating. In these columns here, we have the Proform speed ratings. And then here we have the Proform uh, class indicators. The horse statistics grid is listed here. And what we have is the horse going grid listed here. So if we go back to the Proform power rating, um, we have our top rated in, in gold, silver, a second rated in silver and third rated in bronze. Um, those would formulate or could potentially formulate part of our contenders list. Remember, as I said earlier, horses that are higher rated tend to win more often than the ones that are lower rated. Um, we also have a nice little cluster here. So this horse here, uh, Exit Europe, could potentially be a contender given that it's not too far dissimilar in terms of number distribution from the other three. We then look at the speed rating and given what I mentioned earlier, there are three horses here that have run speed ratings last time out that are effectively better than the class of this race. So instantly those would be ones we would consider for our contenders list. If we then look at the class ratings, there are a number of horses that are going up in class, and there's one here, um, Idle Deputy, that's going down in class. So to use the analogy that it's, in theory, running against um, lower class op uh, um, opposition, then it's a horse that we would possibly consider for our contenders list. We take a look at the horse stats uh, grid, uh, the past performance grid we have the relevant information for career distance class and course and um, we just take one example um, number, horse number seven um, its career it's run nine times and only placed once um, again it's lower rated so it's something that we wouldn't consider for our list uh, the one that we need to have some decisions upon is Dark uh, Avenger, Avenger that's second rated in the list but it's run 13 times and placed seven on seven occasions. Um, if we can see across the, the grids themselves it's got a, a whole bunch of grey so that's not to say that it's something that um, we would dismiss but in terms of pecking order we would have to consider um, where it rates against the other contenders as well, given that its performance on career, distance, class, and course um, doesn't really uh, hold that, that much confidence. 
if we take a look at the horse going grid, um, it allows us now to demonstrate one of the key features of the race guide where we display all the going conditions. And in this case, it's all the going conditions that you can get on the all weather. So fiber sand at Subble, Polytrack at Kempton at Lingfield, um, and at Tapita at Wolverhampton. So given this is a race at Wolverhampton, our, um, the one that we will look at here is Tapita. And looking at the information, we can see that Know Your Name has run on this um, surface three times, placed once, and won um, on two occasions. And again, because we've color-coded uh, color the uh, bars as well, it's then very, very easy to see um, with our eyes that um, this particular horse and also Exit Europe and Sir Lancelot are the ones, um, along with Gable the Thug, are the ones that have performed better than the other horses in the race on the Tapita, Tapita surface. There are other elements of the race guide that we haven't touched upon tonight. Um, I will do that in, in future webinars. Um, but as you can see, there's a lot of information um, to absorb. And what I'll go on to next is to just demonstrate one way how we can pull all that information together. So how do we organize our thoughts? As I mentioned, again, we had a lot of information that we, that's um, thrown at us that we've got from the race guides. And one thing that served me well really is to organize it in, in terms of a grid format. So I've taken the five elements of tonight's webinar and put them in a grid against some notional horses A, B, C, and D. Um, in this case, I've used ticks and crosses to indicate whether I feel confident about a horse in a particular category versus one where I feel that the horse has not performed well in that category or doesn't have a good rating or um, doesn't is not run up to class. And where I'm unsure, I use uh, question marks. Now, you could use this method or you can use a method uh, enumerated. Either way, it's important that we go through this process because what it allows us to do then is organize our thoughts in this way. And by doing so, it's very easy to see that horse D here has scored sort of highly in, in each category. Um, we may choose to add more columns uh, we may, again, we may choose to enumerate it itself. We also may find that there's lots of question marks in this grid, which tends to suggest that we're not uncertain or unsure about the race. That means then that um, we have to ask ourselves the question, is it a race that we should be betting in? Because um, we can't clearly identify which horse are more likely to win compared to the others, because it's unclear from the information provided to us. So in summary, we have within the race guides our ratings, which provide an objective measure of performance. Um, they are from the ProForm software, and um, they have a high expectation. But higher rated horses have a higher expectation than lower rated horses. The ProForm speed ratings, so horses that ran fast in class, light time out, have demonstrated an ability to beat winners. And from various studies, the Horses, how horses performed its previous race has a good indication of how it'll perform in future races, and we can use the speed figure to judge that. We can use the class indicator, it provides an indication of the quality of the opposition the horse has competed against, and that will allow us to determine which horses belong in the class, which are dropping into the grade, or which are which ones are ri rising into the grade. The past performance grid gives us a concise record of the horse's performance, so we can identify whether the horse has done well on a certain go-in or a certain um, distance. Um, and the way that we've visualized that information allows, that to, allows you to identify that information fairly quickly. And then finally, we have the pace map, where we can then look at how the race will be run. Is it the case that one of our contenders, given the pace of the race, it may find itself um, disadvantaged and then may not become a contender. Or something that we thought that wasn't a contender, actually given the makeup of the race, may have a chance. And this is what uh, the pace map allows us to do. So that concludes our, our first webinar.
Um, apologies if you've had any uh, technical difficulties. And I'm, I'm aware that one, two of you may have dropped off the line. Um, as I mentioned previously, this recording, this webinar is recorded. So we will then send you out a link to it. I bring your attention also to the link that I've highlighted on the screen here, where on our website, we have a law, learn more section. And in that section there are multiple videos that cover all aspects of Proform where you can watch and uh, learn more about the software. If you've got any questions at all, uh, any comments, any feedback, we welcome. And um, if you could just feed these back via um, email. So that concludes our webinar, webinar our first webinar tonight. Um, thanks for attending. Um, my name is Michael Bailey, and on behalf of Proform, um, thanks very much for taking the time. And um, hopefully, we'll speak to you soon enough. And have a pleasant evening. Take care. Bye bye.